I was ending there. Call the meeting to order. All members are counted for. So, would everyone please rise and join us? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. here of looking at possibly going out for an operating levy, we have engaged with uh, ISG, uh, who has a lot of familiarity with the district, and Sue Peterson is a marketing person with lots of survey experience over the years, and from her, from her life, and so we engage the public on uh, a survey of what their tax tolerance would be for a potential operating levy, and Sue is here to share the results with us. So welcome, Sue. Thank you. All right. All right. Good to be back. I feel like I see people like we're all, we're old friends. We've done lots of work together over the years. Um, so yep, we sent that survey out via postcard in March to your community. Um, so folks could either um, download a pay for a survey, call for a survey, or follow the link and take that survey online. The next slide, Jeff, shows us that we mailed um, just over 3,600 postcards out to all residential households within the district. And then on the next slide, we see that you had 992 responses. So holy smokes, the people of Cannon Falls um, continue to tell us that they like to take surveys. So we certainly experienced that um, in other examples over the years in our work together. Um, as you recall from other surveys, we want to make sure all subsets of your community are represented. So we ask people to tell us a bit about themselves. Why is this information important? Um, again, we want to make sure that representation, but we're going to be thoughtful of how we analyze the data to make sure it correlates with people's voting habits. So age breakout is exactly what we would anticipate. Um, not a lot of response from those 18 to 25 year olds. Really, the majority of your respondents sitting between that 26 years old and 55. We want to make sure that the folks who are responding to the survey live in the school district. 9% of the survey respondents don't. Who is that? Um, you likely have school district employees that don't live in the district, but we certainly want to make sure that they are aware of what's going on, have an opportunity to weigh in. Similarly, you would have um, non-resident parents that would have had the opportunity to respond. So while the responses of those 9% are important when we're considering voting habits, we do remove those folks. So I'll talk in a little bit about resident respondents when we're analyzing this data. Next slide. We want to know where folks live, so we do a breakdown there. Again, this is information should you choose to go out, um, that Jeff and I would likely use this as we're being thoughtful about how we target different groups or um, responses or information that maybe a different portion of your um, district might need. All right, of those who took the survey, 12% reported that they work for the district. 88% um, said that they did not. That, I would say, is very um, typical about that response right there. Then we asked on the next slide, if you were a parent, um, do you have school-aged children? And you can see 64% of the respondents said that they had school-aged kids. Again, very typical when we're analyzing this data and looking at, when I think of other surveys, that's typically what you see in a response rate. So the group that I'm most interested in, again, when I'm thinking about what could happen, should you choose to go 
to, um, to the polls is the group that answered no to both of these questions. So those folks that say, no, I don't have school-aged children, and no, I don't work for you. So you'll see that group as we move forward. We also just wanted to say, if you've got school-aged kids, check off which school or schools do they attend. Again, this is just data that we could use should you go um, to referendum that we might say, OK, this group of parents, um, we would want to target and provide some additional information or whatnot. All right, so regarding school operations, um, we let folks know that you've got some financial challenges, not unique, certainly, to Cannon Falls, and that, um, you know, would folks consider supporting the <coughs> operating levy to reduce the amount of future cuts? And again, that black bar is those general citizens, so the people that answered no to both of those questions. No, I don't work for you. No, um, I don't have school-aged <coughs> children. So those folks make up the majority of voters. And what do we see? 43% um, of that group said yes. Uh, see, I don't have my bifocals on from here. Said um, yes that they would support a levy strong support from both your parents of school-aged children and um, your school district employees that live in the district. So we wanted to educate people on why is there this school funding challenge. So we provided some information on the school funding formula that continues to be a problem across the state and the fact that there continues to be that gap between um, what the district gives and what it costs to educate students. So we provided that information there. The next slide showed um, what the district has been doing and how they were going to address that initial $400,000 in cuts and the fact that continuing to make future cuts would really impact the um, quality of education for students as well as the ability to retain quality staff. So again, it's really the setup for an operating levy of income gain you would support. Then we asked folks, well, if you wouldn't support an operating levy, um, what types of cuts would you suggest that the board and district administration consider? And so the, the highest bars there, you can't see them from way in the back, but it was things like reducing co-curricular activities, increasing fees. Um, what do we know about the, both of those? When we're talking about substantial um, budget cuts. Those are small things, right? So increasing fees for student activities isn't going to bring in a lot of money to solve the problem. Similarly, cutting co-curriculars, we know that that creates challenges. Reducing administration, sorry, Jeff and team, that I think got the, the next highest vote there. All right, so we asked the big question that everybody's curious about. Um, we said, all right, we've got some options as far as um, what an operating levy could look like. And so we really do this to try and rein in on, you know, what would be a fair amount to go out to voters that you would likely see success. So we talked about just nothing. Don't go back out. Continue to cut programs and services. And then there was a $750 per pupil over the next 10 years. Granted, that isn't going to get you across the finish line. You're going to have to continue to make cuts. The $1,000 per pupil and the $1,250 per pupil. So when we look at each of those, the next slide is really the most, well, here we had the, what those tax impacts were. That's the next slide is the one that we're most excited about. So you can't see those numbers real well there. Um, all right, so the furthest over, that option four, so that was the $12.50 per pupil. Your general citizens had 16% support, 38% support from your parents, and 32% support from your resident staff. Then that $1,000 per pupil, you had 20% support from your general citizens, 23% support from your parents, 29% support from your staff. Um, option two was the 750 per pupil, so it would require us to continue to make some cuts. 16%, um, 13% from your parents, 
from your jet um, your school district staff. So when we get to this 750 per pupil, we've crossed that 50% finish line, okay? So we're gonna add up that 16 and the 20, and what my goal was was to try and get to 50%, right? Because then I know I've got support. And so when I get to the 750 per pupil, I can see I've got 52% support from your general citizens. So the people that don't work for you and the folks that don't um, have kids in your district. And so that's important because that makes up 75% of your voters. And if we look then at your um, parents of school-aged kids, same thing. So we're going to add those up until we get to that 750 per pupil. And in doing that, when we get to the 750 amount, we've got 74% support there. So if we think of your parents of school-aged kids make up 25% of voters, so we think of a 74 times 0.25 and the 52 times 0.75. And I remember the order of operations from school uh, math. You're really at that 750 per pupil. You've got just over 57% support for a 750 per pupil levy. So uh, as I always look at this, I think, well, can we do better? Could we go to, since 57% support, could we go to the $1,000 per pupil and would you have success at the polls? And the answer is no. Because if you look at that black bar, you'd only sit at 36% support from your general citizens. And so you won't have enough support from those folks to get you across the finish line. So, I mean, right, and, and Jeff and I had a conversation this morning of, oh, could it be somewhere in between? And I think the answer is, I wouldn't go there at this point, that you, um, you know, the, the 750 per pupil increase is certainly gonna give you a nice boost from where you're at at 500 right now, is that right? So more than doubling your per pupil um, allocation, I think is solid, but your community is saying, given the tax increase, that's where they would land. Does that make sense? Questions on that? I have a question. Um, yep. The amount of, I'm not sure, any more information. Um, I'm surprised how, like staff, for example, what are they, what would you say they're typically looking for more of? Just where these funds are going? Yep. Or? Yep. What does this mean? Where are they going? Yep. Those types of things. And we've got the comments. Um, we could, pull those apart and say, let's just look at what types of things, um, you know, school district employees commented on as a way to provide some, you know, better understanding there. Likely some of this might have been the, um, you were in the process of making reductions when the survey was done and they knew they were coming. So they might have had some, some thoughts about that as well. Sure. And then the 12% of general citizens a big number, right? I mean, as far as people. Yep. But it's better. I mean, sometimes you'll see that high, sure. um, that there's just a lot of unknown. These folks here, I'm, I'm a no. So, you, you know, what this tells me is you've got about a lot of 30 year people that have put their fork in the ground and they're, you're not moving these people. So these folks that aren't sure, you might move about a third of them, um, likely to the lowest one. So, you know, those folks, yeah. Um, but the other folks are just too Minnesota nice to tell you no right away, but they're not moving. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The number of uh, responders proportionate to the number of um, cards that were sent out. Yeah. It, it, is that percentage a high percentage? Yeah, you were over 30%. Um, yeah, anytime we can dance over 18 to 20%, we're happy. Mm -hmm. So good engagement there, right? I mean, it just shows that we have some some good response and, and we know just with the statistics of surveys like this after we after we cross the finish line of 400 um, the data just doesn't wiggle a whole lot so um, more is always better because it, that means more people went through the exercise of processing being thoughtful and giving a response and so um, you know your response rate was great And that included anyone that did online mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Just yep. They all end up in the queue. Um, the 
least under experience at 57 or 58 percent. Um, is that what's the right way to put it? Should our confidence level be fairly high that when presented, the community will support us? Yeah, it does. I do feel that way. The data, um, the words I always use are like freaky predictive. <laughs> so, um, you know, they'll usually land within one to two percent of what the survey results come come back at. Again, you're gonna you're gonna move some of those undecideds will become more educated and come along with you, and you might just have some folks that fall off. So I would anticipate um, you don't want to just go into this without a nice information campaign and a good um, way to can you really want to engage your community and connect with them and acknowledge that this is a tax increase. Um, but I'm certainly comfortable that you, um, in essence, have a nice cushion that you would find success at that 750 for people. What was the difference of um, success rate, if you will, from the 750 to the 1,000 percentage-wise? What yep. was it off by? Can you remind me? Yep. So here, if we look here, you would have been, you'd have only had 36% support from your parents or from your general citizens. So when this guy's that low, you're not going to get across the finish line. Those are the majority of voters. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like parents of school age children are the majority of voters because they're likely the people you interact with the most. But it's going to be people that don't work for you and don't have kids in your schools, right? When you think of that over representation of folks over the age of 55, mm -hmm. over the age of 65 that go to the polls, those folks really determine what happens in an election. Which is why that community engagement piece is so important. Because there are people that may never <coughs> step foot in your schools. They don't, oftentimes they fail to make the connection of what's happening in your schools um, with the value of the general. Doing the math. Yes. Of the Sue Peterson math. The Sue Peterson math. Yes, yeah. it comes in at about 42, 43%. That's it. And I'll sell the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that was closer to 48, for 49, I'd say, is it worth it? Yeah. And if it was, then I'd say, okay, we need to be really thoughtful about what your, how you message and move a campaign and engage with parents um, that you want to have. Then you have to have like over representation of parents at the polls, but you start to play some analysis games of what that means and swinging. The amount of parents that show up at the polls is actually a bigger lift than one realizes. If that makes sense. Yeah. The parents, the results of the parents, I and mean, is this where you would expect them to be, or is it low, or is it high? Is it? Yeah, we always see. I mean, likely parents are more supportive than your general citizens, right? They get the grueling work that uh, school district staff do. They see and are going to feel what happens when there's reductions. Um, I always tell the story when I put my oldest in kindergarten. Um, it wasn't in the district I worked in. And I was like, why are there 27 little friends in this kindergarten room? And they're like, oh, that's what we do here. And I was like, dear God. Um, you know, I mean, I just had kind of missed the fact that we all didn't do class sizes the way we did where I was. And so um, that was a little come to Jesus with administration. but. Um, you know, so those, I think those pieces, you, what that does send a message to your staff, though, is that your parents of your school age kids really support the work that you do. And that's, a, that's an important piece, I think, for people to see and realize. If, if we're looking for a safe percentage to go out for this, would you consider, would you change your safe percentage based on if it was an election year or a non election year? You know, the data really is consistent regardless so um, I would I'm comfortable either way I don't feel you can jump from the 750 to the thousand sure. mm -hmm. the biggest challenge with those election year elections always is just they get noisy there's just so much and I think um, if we think of recent you know big elections a lot of times we communicate and try and push information via social media. And I would anticipate that this November, 
Um, we're going to have a lot of people that just tap out of social media for eight, ten weeks that just aren't going to play. And so we're going to have to be thoughtful in how we connect with people. Do you feel that the responses from our senior citizens, was that a, a decent percentage? Yep, per yep. A typical community is going to sit about 12 to 14 percent of your community as senior citizens, so you were represented there. Yeah, I think you've got good data. I think your community is saying uh, we support the work that's done. Uh, you're old, more than doubling uh, what you currently have. And so go back one slide if you would, if you would please. Um, you know, we just want to be, I think the other piece is to just always be thoughtful that we're asking people, we're asking people to spend more money, right? In a time when we're all being cautious of how we spend our money. And so, um, you know, what we appreciate is that people reflected and said, I value this and think it's important. Here's how much I can give. And so um, you did see a third of people say, er, I'm out. Um, but you saw a large percentage of people say, I'm thoughtful about how much I can give you and what that means. Um, <coughs> those people that said, mm, no. Um, are we able to narrow down just their particular answers on what they thought? Well, then where should productions be? Yep, we could certainly do a disaggregation and look at that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it just gives you a where are they at? Correct. Right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, we absolutely can. So we can pull any of those. I'm very, we're very happy to do that and can provide some reports. You know, if you go out for ten years at the with the additional seven fifty per people. So then you're in at 12.50, right? Um, it doesn't mean that you're going to run the whole 10 years at that levy. You may, in five or six years, say um, we need to ask for some more. That lift then is just smaller, right? That tax impact is just going to be smaller at that point. So those are also things to be thought about. Yeah, when, when we showed on the survey what our gap was in funding compared to when the uh, we got the 500. Uh, where does that? We didn't by, show that. We just showed the states. That's just the states' that's general the state's funding general. formula. So yeah. by if we get the additional 750, where would that put us? Well, if you look at it from a simplistic standpoint, if you add our current 500 onto this and then another 750. Get close to closing that gap. Does it close at all? Or it not gets, quite. Not quite. I think the the hidden important factor in this is that inflation factor that gets added to the yeah. correct yep. piece because that takes inflation off the table and you don't have to worry about that because right now we haven't had an inflation factor for the past twenty years in our operating mm -hmm. and it didn't start in our basic formula until this next session last year. And then that this would be for 10 years, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then the board at that time would be able to automatically renew that if they chose at that time. Uh, we only or, one. But we're, we, since we are, so we already used that. Like that card. Yep, we already used that. Sure. And, you know, depends on how you think of legislatures. Legislatures can either go back and add another, you know, another chance, or they could have taken away what the previous legislature had done. Sure. And so, depends on who's running St. Paul at that time. Anything else, Dean? Sue, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sue. All right, good to see you again. <clears throat> thanks, Sue. Um, we will bring this back for further discussion uh, in upcoming board meetings. Uh, there is a timeline that we need to follow if the board does decide to go out this fall that we need to pass resolutions and decide on amount that we want to and how to mark it. So. All right. Good food for thought. Moving down. Um, Committee reports. Who has something uh, where the 
Judiciary Committee might have met in the last their last meeting? Well, I went to the DCD meeting and they didn't have any anything real new to report other than the fact that they were closing in on um, their negotiation session. And um, that, that was about it. Anyone else? Facilities met. Um, we went through our um, community use of school facilities and equipment contract or if someone rents our space as well. <coughs> cleaned up some verbiage uh, that had a a loophole may be potentially in it. Um, also online, it wasn't showing the most up-to-date revised version of that plan. So that's updated. And then we went through and increased some rates to our facilities for those that aren't tied to the school. So we kept the CFYAs, um, those, those groups that are tied to the school or um, their rates aren't going up, but we're going to increase the for-profits and those that aren't connected to the school. So it's still probably um, cheap options, but just went through and, and cleaned some of that up. I think that was it. And also just brainstorming over different uh, needs for uh, facilities and uh, trying to come up with the best plans going forward with the limited funds that we have. Anyone else? Uh, I guess you can mention for at Foundation uh, oh. this weekend uh, is our big uh, fundraiser. Auction. Auction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the auction. I couldn't think of the name. Mm -hmm. So everyone come out. That's at 6 o'clock, I believe. Yep, there's live auction, there's silent auction, they do games in between. It's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. It's a, it's a blast. And it all goes for a good cause. Yes. And where is this at? Mill Street. Mill Street. Moving down, administrative reports. Um, we have attachments from uh, our admin team. Would anybody like to add? Yeah, to? I did not have an attachment this time around. Um, just a couple of things. A thank you to the Ed Foundation for bringing in the Jacob Wetterling presenter. Um, those student presentations were very well received. Um, it's a fun chance for our elementary students to come up to the auditorium and. and in that element. Um, our Eagle Bluff kiddos came back last Friday, our fourth graders. That was super fun. And so thanks to the Ed Foundation for their partnership in that and um, amongst other donors. Um, they had a great time. There was a windy day, but they ended up getting to do a, a better treetop, uh, I guess, <coughs> plan for that. So that was fun. Um, MCA testing season is upon us. And thank you to Mr. Strauss for his organization. Um, I can't imagine having to uh, go through that. I remember being a DAC, and it's not our funnest, proudest moments, but he's handling that like a champ. So, um, third round of teacher observations are complete, and I, like Mr. Hodges, will start setting up the end of the year uh, meetings with the staff here. So, that's all I have. Steven, about the testing in general. Uh, <laughs> Nope. Testing stuff is ACT tomorrow for juniors and MCA's reading tomorrow uh, begins for grades 3 through 8 and 10. And then math is a couple weeks after that and science is going to be the week after that. Do you have anything in addition to what you've got? Uh, no, my report is complete. A lot of pictures, did you see those? Yeah. <laughs> That's how you fill up the page, right? I cut you off. Jen, are you able to touch on my chance um, some of the just Reader's Digest version of the topics that the Jacob Wetterling um, speaker discussed? Yeah. Especially with, because I, I know it was different for age range. Yeah, so those are younger ones. So our K4 were together, and then our fifth graders went with 512. And the K4 was in Empower Me. Um, you know, it just talked about things to be wise about when you're little, like where is your bubble and how do you handle when someone is kind of in your bubble. And I just thought it was like a really nice way to explain to kids in an appropriate matter where, you know, where do you feel safest when someone is right up in your face. And, and also that some adults don't know boundaries and phrasing it like that was huge to me about um, 
you know, some adult, adults just don't know your boundaries. And then to have those five people who are like your safety net and, and who those people might be for you. So I just thought that was great. The 512 presentation I also thought was great. Um, I don't remember that one as much as the K4 one. It was really about online safety. Yes. And keeping your, you know, making sure you're making wise decisions when you're interacting with people online. So and if someone be... isn't interacting with you appropriately to say something, right. too far, too often do they get too far in? Um, so, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good uh, Mr. Sampson, you have a super report. Yes. Um, basically, we just had a report from the uh, career fair that we held here uh, early March. This is the final report from uh, Future Forward uh, that had a lot of uh, <coughs> metrics and uh, cool pictures, actually, and data from that event that the Southeast Service Co-op uh, filed with us here as well. Uh, if you haven't been to that uh, in the past, this event was, I would say, a little bit larger last year yep. um, and we plan on doing it again next year so if you didn't make it this year you'll have a chance to come and see the craziness that is that day but it's just great that you hear nothing but positive reviews from uh, vendors from uh, other schools that attend the kids that attend uh, they all thought it was kind of cool so how many other schools do we have attended you know James roughly uh, how many schools yeah uh, I don't it's in that report I think the, the report said we had like 1,900 students here today, <coughs> besides our, so there are a lot. Yeah, uh, been... off the top of my head, if I can't find it here, um, 13 other schools, 15 other schools. Somewhere. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and they range from large school districts to very small school districts. Yes. Everywhere in between. Um, I believe we had as far away as Albert Lee. Right. Come, uh, I know Austin came, so uh, it's a good Southeast Minnesota experience and kind of a shout out to us for hosting and Tim and his crew did a great job of getting that together with uh, the Southeast Service Co-op and Future Forward. So we're looking forward to that expanding even in the future years. So Dave Peterson and his team did a great job as well helping out that day. Other than that? <coughs> okay. And Dave Peterson's report is also in here, Head of Operations and Maintenance. Moving down to public input, comments are welcome from students, residents of the district, members <coughs> of the district, people with children in the district, and employees of the district, and must relate to the current agenda and not exceed three minutes. Does anyone wish to speak to the board about anything pertaining to the agenda? Moving on. Under old business, consideration to approve a change in the 25-26 calendar that was previously approved. Yes, uh, the 25-26 calendar was previously approved at a uh, board meeting just a little while ago, but we did notice that there was uh, an issue with where we put Easter, which may have caused problems uh, <laughs> in that school year, and uh, spring break as well. And so we did move spring break down a week and then we put April or Easter in its appropriate spot. So. <laughs> Stuff happens sometimes. <laughs> somebody would have noticed that. Yes, yeah, somebody in another year or so probably would have would have found that. But um, yeah, and so and just so that you guys know, also uh, the state still hasn't gotten his act together for the Read Act, which is the legislative. Uh, piece that came out last spring. We may be changing the 24-25 calendar to reflect training that is needed for staff next year. And then this very calendar that I have up right now, the 25-26, may also come back next year to reflect changes that is needed for middle school, high school staffing is the best way to put it. So, more to come on these calendars. <clears throat> More question, I'm just curious. Typically, don't we do spring break every other year? I know this we have it again. Yeah, this is the second this year. Oh, gotcha. This is 25. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Sorry for the confusion, but yeah, it, it's people would have started noticing that at some point. So I would look for a motion to approve the change to the twenty five twenty six calendar. I'll move. Right. I'll move to approve. We've got the approval and the second. Other discussion. All in favor of this change say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Under new business, community use, consideration to approve the community use of school facilities and equipment document. Is that what Brooke was talking about previously? Yes, and I believe Reed is still at a baseball game. Right. Um, so the portion of that document that is being dealt with right here uh, is uh, right here there's a there's a damage deposit change for class 2a 2b and class 3 and then uh, something else I noticed on here that did not get changed but should have been changed is the class 2b and class 3 charges for these events and if you basically it's an easy change because these prices would be double moving forward and so the 25 would go to 50 and the 50 would go to 100 and so uh, if you can imagine this changed all the way down this list for those two categories Josh double and quadruple oh I'm sorry you're right double and quadruple so we did go from 25 to 50 and 50 to 200 right the last one is for profit so that is the reason for the quadruple for profit yes yep so when this gets changed if the board approves it tonight it would be 50 and then quadruple whatever price is listed i guess some of these it's double and then quadruple it's the best way to kind of look at it <clears throat> just for context during our meeting it was i think clinton brought it up that currently you could rent the high school auditorium for a hundred dollars an hour so like a non-profit could come in so they could run their own concert and you know not that we don't want people to make money but we want to make sure we're covering our expenses um, as we do that so um, it just made sense to those especially those for-profit groups that are coming in and we don't have a ton of them that do it but we do have some so is it the recommendation from the facility group to approve this it was, you know, change. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'd look for a motion to approve the community use of school facilities doc as, as stated. I'll make a motion. Jolene on the motion. I'll second. Second by Louis. Brian? Yep. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the fundraising opportunities for the robotics team. Yeah. Uh, with the robotics team going off to Worlds uh, at a moment notice, we figured that we need to probably have the board approve some additional fundraising opportunities. Kind of a little bit post haste as this happened really quickly, obviously. And so we are asking for the board to approve additional fundraising options uh, formally for the robotics team as a uh, work their way into the world's competition down in Houston, Texas, and said that their people are leaving one another week. Yeah, we leave Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. the 17th through the 21st. And they get to go um, on that Sunday. They don't fly out, they don't fly home until later in the evening, and they get to go um, to the NASA Space Center, which they have, apparently they have a they host or they um, sponsor a robotics team every year in that area. And so they have like a museum of all the robots that they've had for every year. So the kids can really get to see the, the you know, how technology can change so vastly in, from year to year. And um, so I think it's gonna be a really uh, neat opportunity for them. When I was hanging out with them, the other because the kids are making earrings and they're using the fab lab they're making buttons um it's been really um kind of fun to hear them 
and where what they're nervous about. They're nervous about interacting with other countries and I just can't get over what a great experience it is just to have that exposure. So, so yeah. I, I will say the community is really stepping up. Oh, the community point. is amazing. Yeah, and Absolutely community businesses, amazing. individuals, yes. Uh, businesses. Yes, they have had good. a lot of support and it's very, very appreciated. We've done just a great job, haven't we? It's mm -hmm. hard to put it into words. So what is this that you're increasing opportunities? Like, what, what is it? What is it really so about? each year, um, groups, uh, we usually only allow one fundraising opportunity mm -hmm. okay. to fit them for the year, but this is something unique, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and it does cost, uh, I think it's a, it's a high cost to just participate in the program itself. Yes. So, um, so it, they needed to create to bring their own costs down because they are still all paying their yeah. own yeah. costs as well. So. so what we'd be approving tonight is the one time by fundraising opportunity for their trip. Yep. Yeah. Okay. For the additional. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Katie on the motion. I'll second. Seconded by Luke. Other discussion? All in favor of the fundraising opportunity to allow our robotics team Say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve a resignation <coughs> effective June 6, 2024. Uh, this is for Ellery Bondi, and I do recommend approval. Motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Another motion. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving the resignation? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Our best to that educator. Consideration to approve a leave in accordance with the teacher master agreement, Article 10, leaves of absence, Section 10, child care leave from August 27. September 27 of 24 with a return date of September 30. Uh, this is for Sammy Lorenz and I recommend approval. Motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Katie on the motion, Joel on the second. Any other discussion? All in favor of the leave in accordance with the teacher's master agreement, say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve an intermittent family <clears throat> medical leave act leave starting July 7th for the 24-25 school year. This is for Stephen Strauss and I recommend approval. Motion to approve. I'll um, make, make a motion to approve. I'll second. Katie had the motion, Clint on the second. Other dis any other discussion? All in favor of the approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Consideration to approve a resolution placing a continuing contract slash tenured teacher on unrequested leave of absence due to the required out of field licensing procedure set forth by LB, the Minnesota Professional Licensing and Standard Boards. Uh, this was a follow-up from last meeting, and this is part two of the process for Brett Zimmerman, and I recommend approval. Part of our procedure here, right? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Clint, on the motion. I'll second. Seconded by Brian. Other discussion? All in, all in favor, say aye. Hmm? Resolution. Resolution. <clears throat> um, <laughs> let's see. Which part? How much? How much do we read? I think. Read the first whereas. Just that first sentence. 
whereas the school board of independent district number 232 adopt a resolution proposing placement of Brett Zimmerman on a 0.6 FTE unrequested leave of absence on March 11, 2024 on the grounds of out of field licensing procedurals set forth by Pelsba. Yes or no vote? Uh, Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Bob? Yes. Katie? Yes. Clinton? Yes. And myself is yes. Okay. That passes by a 6 0. Consideration yes. to approve the resolution relating to the termination and non renewal of the teaching contract at the close of the 23 24 school year probationary teacher. Uh, these items, next three items, are follow up from the that were approved at the last meeting. Uh, the first name for the first item is Daniel Huddy. And I recommend approval on that. Do I hear a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Luke, on the motion, Julian, on the second. Other discussion? This is a resolution also. Yeah. Right. Okay. <coughs> Clerk, you're up. Right, where's, is it the, do you think it's going to be the very first okay. one then? Yeah. Or are they? Yeah, they're both the same, but you can put in the end, buddy. Okay. Just start where it says whereas, it's a little bit shorter. You want me to read just that first paragraph? Yeah. Whereas Daniel Huddy is a probationary teacher in independent <coughs> number 252, be resolved by the school board of independent school district number 252, Pursuant to Minnesota Statutes 122A.40, Subdivision 5, and the District Master Agreement and the Teaching Contract of Daniel Huddy, a probationary teacher in Independent School District Number 252, shall be non renewed at the close of the current 2023 2024 school year. And there will be notice sent. Yes or no vote on that too? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Bob? Yes. Katie? Yes. Clinton? Yes. And myself, yes. It passed by a 6 0 vote. Consideration to approve the resolution relating to the termination and non renewal of a teaching contract at the close of the 23 24 school year probationary teacher. Uh, it's the same thing. This person is Amber Morgan. And I recommend approval. Motion. I'll make a motion. Katie, on the motion. Second. I'll okay. second. Ryan? Luke. Luke. Other discussion? None? Clerk? <sighs> Whereas Daniel Morgan is a probationary. Amber Morgan. I'm sorry, Amber Morgan um, is a probationary. Probationary teacher at Independent School District Number 252, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District Number 252 that the pursuant to Minnesota Statutes 122A.40, Subdivision 5, and the District Master Agreement and Teaching Contract of Amber Borgen, a probationary teacher at Independent School District Number 252, shall be non renewed at the close of the current 2023 2024 school year. Brian, is it yes or no? Yes. Luke? Yes. Bob? Yes. Katie? Clinton? Yes. And myself is yes. That passes. 96 0 vote. Number nine, consideration to approve a, a resolution relating to the termination in general ed for paraprofessional positions and job transfer offer to special ed paraprofessional position. Uh, the person's name attached to this is Rena Wells. Um, she is still thinking about the transfer. So that is still <laughs> But at this point, the position, the general position is being changed. Motion? I like motion. I'll second. Brian on the motion, Julian on the second. Other discussion? Clerk? Is this one going to be a little bit different? Pretty much the same. Okay. It's a little bit different, but. I say, is the verbiage going to be? It's a little bit different. It's the last one I've heard that. Okay. 
whereas Raina Wells is a regular education paraprofessional in the independent school district number 252, be it resolved by the school board of, by the school board of independent school district number 252 that the general education paraprofessional position in the independent school district number 252 shall be terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year and Raina Wells shall be offered a special education paraprofessional position for the 2024-25 to 25 school year. Brian said yes or no? Yes. Luke? Yes. Bob? Yes. Katie? Yes. Clinton? Yes. And myself? Yes. I pass it by a 6 0 vote. So that closes our meeting. Uh, informational items you can see for the next meeting. Anything you would like to add? Or, uh, well, if you'd like to add, contact Lori or Jeff, and we'll see if it's uh, appropriate to put it on the next board minutes. You can see what's going on uh, for the next meeting. So, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Julian, on the motion. I'll second. Seconded by Fry. Of the discussion, all in favor? Closing the meeting.